I'm happy to be with you again today. A supernatural life, that's what we're considering this morning. Last time we studied the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans and especially chapter 6. Now Paul was a tough in-your-face teacher. I try to copy him. He wrote this in chapter 6 and verse 3. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptised into Christ were baptised into his death? Verse 11, we are therefore to consider ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God. Now, all of our lives, all our natural lives, we've got used to being in charge of what we do, what we eat, who we associate with, and of course, our own pleasure, pursuing pleasure. After all, we, we only live once. Enjoy yourself. And then we get born again and get our ticket to heaven. And we join a happy, clappy club, which is known as a modern church, and we make new friends. But unfortunately, they all get as sick and are just as poor as the people in the world, the unbelievers in the world. Why? Because it's just full of converts who pray the prayer of salvation. Now, converts, they think that they are on the right path. It's a path that seems right to them. Proverbs 14 and verse 12. But the destination is death, misery. They don't get any happiness and joy out of it because they're converts. We thought we repented of our sins. We convinced of that. But we not repented at thought level. Think about that uh, perfumed, heavily made up secretary at work who smiles at you nicely. And then one day you think, well, let me take her out for a snack. If that's the case, then as Jesus said in Matthew 5, 27, 28, if we think lustfully, we've already committed adultery because we haven't repented at thought level. That level of repentance is necessary to make the transition from a convert to a serious disciple of Christ. Jesus gave some instructions to those who wanted to follow him as disciples, recorded in Mark, Mark chapter 8 and verses 35 to 37. Jesus called the crowd together with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside his selfish interests, and take up his cross expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. And follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, in suffering or maybe dying, because of faith in me. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. And whoever loses his life in this world for my sake and for the gospel uh, will save that life from the consequences of sin and separation from God. For what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There are very few who actually follow that narrow path that leads to life. Jesus said there would only be a few who found that path. Matthew 7 is a path of self-denial. It's a path of death to self and my own interests. Now, in Luke, we read, Luke 6, 46, Why do you call me Lord and don't do the things that, that I say? That's what Jesus is speaking. This type of person is like a man who builds a house on sand. And when the storm comes, the house will fall. Luke 6, 46 to 49. Much of the time that I spend in ministry, I'm dealing with people who are built on sand. And then when the storms of life, which come to all of us, all sorts of storms of, of uh, sickness and lack and, and broken relationships, happens to all of us. But when those storms come, if we're built on sand, our life is going to fall apart. All of us get hit by those storms. But if Jesus is just our saviour and not our Lord, it means we're built on sand. We need to build on the rock and make him Lord. That's why he said, why do you call me Lord? Don't do the things I ask you to do. 
It's a tough decision to give over the reins of our life to the Lord Jesus. He told his disciples, this is recorded in John 12, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, that's our self-life, it remains alone, just one grain and never more. But if it dies, it produces much grain and yields a harvest. And that's what we're looking for. The one who loves his life eventually loses it through death. But he who hates his life in this world and is concerned with pleasing God will keep it for life eternal. So there again, another passage, this time recorded by John saying, theme but he uses the illustration of a, a grain of wheat we are that grain of wheat we need to die to our self life do you really want to experience the supernatural the supernatural presence of god in our lives is your natural life really nailed to the cross romans 6 verse 6 the apostle paul had made his choice this is what he wrote to the church in galatia I have been crucified with Christ. I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That's that translation. Some translations say I live by the faith of the Son of God, which is a better translation. We, we got Christ's faith, so we don't live anymore our own life. Christ lives his life through us. And when we get sick and tired, and being sick and tired, then we may want to take notice of what he teaches us and follow his example. Because unless we pass through death, we will never pass into the supernatural life and that's where i want to go and that's where i'm hoping you're going to follow me amen bless you for watching today bye bye see you soon